Man plays with the DNA, they play with the genes, they play with the cells on, on one hand. They want to play with the creation of Allah, they want to uh, contaminate people, they want to consider what's not natural as natural, they want to play with the ecosystem, they want to contaminate, for example, the uh, whatever else it may be around us, and they, 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 the warfare happens, the, 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 the fighting and killing happens, and people say, why did Allah allow this? Why bring Allah into that equation when you know that Allah tells you it's your your fault you did it you played with it now you will have to live with the consequences of what you caused this is something very very strong that we need to think about calamity that has struck you is because of what you did with your own hands you caused problems you know people testing nuclear weapons in the oceans and then expect no tsunami to happen and then just say it was a natural thing and then blame allah to say why did nature do this to us or why did you allow this to happen you did it man i mean one person kills another and then you blame allah for that come on don't blame allah for your failure oh man Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the, the, the knowledge or the brain to recognize right from wrong. You chose not to. You chose to allow yourself to be programmed in a wrong way. And this is why the pen is not writing deeds until you arrive at the age of maturity when you must ask about your faith, your religion and the apps in your device. And you must delete some of those apps that are dangerous and you must recondition your mind and brain in order for it to come in sync with what Allah has revealed. That's the only time we're going to be able to achieve success is when we re-sync the entire system that we have into or with that which Allah has revealed. This is what Allah wants from us. We cannot blame Allah for what we've done. Allah says, you did it with your hands. Allah speaks of the chaos and corruption that has become manifest on land and at sea. Allah says, it is because of the doings of man in order that they may turn back. So Allah says, we will allow you to taste. We will make you taste part of the uh, you know, reaction of what you've done so that you can come back to Allah. You recognize. So when calamity comes your way, then what happens? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing you. If you are close to him and it draws you closer to him, like we've said so many times, it is a gift of Allah. But if it drifted you away, it is the punishment of Allah. And when Allah punishes someone and he lets them taste hardship, if he has drawn you back to him after that, it was still a blessing after the punishment. Subhanallah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Imagine if someone had to spy on you and knew what you were up to. They would never forgive you or... They would never look at you with the eye of positivity ever because they knew what you were up to. But your life has changed. You're genuinely a changed person. Only Allah understands that. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, the whole world will let you down. Absolutely everyone will let you down. But Allah will not let you down. Allah says, my worshiper, I will forgive you by you just asking me for forgiveness even if your sins were as much as would fill from the earth to the skies. You want to hear the words? Yabna Adama, Law Balagat Dhunu Buka Anana Samae, Thummastar Fartani, Rafar Tulaka, Walla Ubali, Lakitani, La Tushri Kubi Shayan. The hadith says, O son of Adam, if your sins had filled from the earth to the skies full of Writing, meaning if they had filled that whole space, that's how many sins you came with on the day of judgment. But you came without associating partners with me. You worshipped me, you tried. Well, I can forgive your sins without even being bothered. It won't really affect anything at all on my side. So Allah is telling us, O son of Adam, no matter what you've done, have hope in my mercy. O son of Adam, your acts of worship benefit you, they don't benefit me. So trust that I will accept them from you. Did you try? Yes, I tried. Accept it. Don't let the devil come to you and make you lose your faith in Allah. 
You have faith in Allah. What is the faith in Allah? He is Ghafoor, Rahim, Wadud. He is the loving, the most merciful, the most forgiving, the most compassionate. That is who Allah is. Have you ever thought about it when we say Bismillahi? The first words as we're reading the Quran, what do we say? Bismillahi, Ar Rahmani, Ar Rahimi. In the name of Allah, what did He choose as the ultimate of the first two names for us? to be repeating. What did he choose? Number one, Ar-Rahman. What's that? The most merciful, the entirely merciful. He is merciful even upon those who don't deserve his mercy. Subhanallah. That's what the meaning of Ar-Rahman. And then he says, Ar-Rahim. He has a specialized mercy for those who believe. They will feel that mercy because of that belief and conviction. When you're convinced with Allah, when you rely on Allah, when you know that the good that came to me is definitely a blessing from Allah and a test, and the bad that came to me is also a blessing from Allah and a test, then you have true belief. Then you're a believer. You know what the Quran says? The Quran speaks about how Allah has created man. Allah alladhi khalaqakum min da'fin thumma ja'ala min ba'di da'fin quwa thumma ja'ala min ba'di quwatin da'fan wa shayba Allah has created you, O man, in a stage of weakness. You were weak when you were born, very weak. So what happened? Someone had to look after you. If they didn't, your survival was at stake. After that weakness, we gave you strength. And after that strength, we reduced you back to weakness and gray hair, which means it's worse than just weakness. You were strong at one stage. You become a person weak once again. And I believe that sometimes, and I'm going to say something, you know, that you might think about later. When you are young, you might mess your napkin and your mother will clean it. Your father might help or your siblings or whoever else. Where did you mess? You messed because your sphincter muscle was not actually controlled. It was not strong enough to hold back. You didn't know how to use it. So perhaps urinated, perhaps you might have messed your napkin, whatever it was. That was a gift that Allah bestowed upon you. Your parents need to know. I sacrifice for the child. But when a person grows older, they may not mess that way. They may mess from their mouths. Remember this carefully. Why? Dirtier words than changing the napkin can come out from elderly people who are in pain sometimes, who are frustrated sometimes, where there's a generation gap and they don't understand. If there's more than nowadays, I'd like to say 25 years, 30 years between you and your, your parents, there's bound to be a generation gap, understanding gap, bound to be. Remember this. Usually they used to say 40 years is a generation completely different thinking. But I think it's gone a little bit less now because technology is advancing every minute. So the way I think might not be the way my children who are 25 years younger than me may think. I will, no matter how cool a dad I think I'm going to be, or a father-in-law, or a mother-in-law, there will be differences in thinking, because there's a generation gap. So, out of frustration sometimes, you say things that are hard, harsh, you don't realize that's not your child, it's someone else's daughter, someone else's son, you've hurt them. When someone else hurts the child of another person, the hurt is deeper, the cut is deeper than if it was your own child. Remember that. Be careful. Now I'm addressing those who were hurt by what the elderly have said to you. Ignore it. Change the nappy and carry on. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. If you've understood what I've said. Let it happen. The next day they'll beg for forgiveness. They might carry it. The difficulty is sometimes the elderly are stubborn. They don't ask for forgiveness. Come what may. They are wrong. We found out that they said one plus one is three and the whole dunya knows it's two. They won't apologize. It's three. It's three. I'm telling you it's three. You say, no, but it's two. Who said you can't subtract one from three? <laughs> That's the type of answers you get. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. These people are witty. They are sharp. They know. Sometimes they don't apologize. Because why? I'm an elderly person. Who are, who are you that I must apologize to you? My beloved elderly, a lot of you are geniuses. You don't make those mistakes. But if you do, subhanallah, please apologize. Please apologize. Learn to make amends. We don't want our children's marriages to break because we are putting pressure on our daughters-in-law or sons-in-law or anyone else. But something that happens when you get old and you are in pain 
your level of tolerance becomes very, very less. The level is low, very low. The fuse becomes 5 amps when it was 15 before. Any small thing and it's blown. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So sometimes, and I know, usually when you hear a little bit of a rant, you hear something, you know, you can say, Subhanallah, you're in pain. You can say, hey, really, it's so, you know. Subhanallah, it happens because that's how the body operates sometimes. You vent out something in a different way without realizing it's wrong, no matter what it's wrong. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.